is going to start charging for food stamps, he is a genius. We've said it before at My Right America, and we'll say it again, welfare fraud is a serious problem. But Trump's solution isn't something any of us have seen before. Keep in mind, the solutions for solving welfare fraud are pretty much limited to finding and rooting out the cheaters. Reforming the system as a whole is much, much harder. So hard, in fact, that no politician has solved it yet. But I'm willing to bet a businessman could. And Trump just put forward a genius solution, charge retailers for accepting food stamps. It's not an expected solution. But it really works. MSN reports. The White House wants to charge retailers that accept food stamps. The Office of Management and Budget said the fee would be assessed when stores sign up and would require renewal after five years. The president's budget estimates that the fee would generate $2.4 billion in revenue over the next decade. An OMB official described the fee as modest and reasonable, emphasizing that some large retailers redeem a billion dollars or more in food stamp benefits each year. This really is something genius. Think about it. Stores that accept food stamps make a ton of money off the federal government, and ultimately the taxpayers. And if they're going to be making that money, shouldn't they be held responsible for making sure that every transaction is fair? And what better way to make sure that every transaction is fair than by charging stores for food stamp purchases? That way, freeloaders won't be allowed to buy booze and cigarettes with taxpayer funds. It's brilliant, businesslike, and common sense. Which means that some liberal somewhere is going to protest it. And they did. The Food Marketing Institute said, We oppose the flawed policy of imposing fees on food retailers in order to reduce the cost of the federal government's nutrition assistance benefits to the most needy in our society. I love everything about this. A lobbying group puts forth a vague and poorly worded sentence that says, in a nutshell, I don't like what Trump is doing. Without, of course, explaining exactly what is wrong with Trump's proposals. Because, take note, no one can pinpoint any holes in this policy. All they can do is make vague statements about how bad it is. That's the last gasps of a dying group of D.C. politicians, folks. Trump is changing D.C. We should stand behind him. Roger Stone predicts what will happen to John McCain for his treachery to Trump. Roger Stone, is and has been a close advisor and friend to President Trump and he is not happy with what John McCain has been doing to President Trump. He took to Twitter and threatened Senator John McCain, R. Oz, on Saturday over John S. Singer at Trump's decision to pardon former Sheriff Joe Arpaio. Karma about to get you, at send John McCain and you will burn in hell for all eternity, comma. McCain released this statement that set off Roger. No one is above the law and the individuals entrusted with the privilege of being sworn law officers should always seek to be beyond reproach in their commitment to fairly enforcing the laws they swore to uphold. Mr. Arpaio was found guilty of criminal contempt for continuing to illegally profile Latinos living in Arizona based on their perceived immigration status in violation of a judge's orders. The president has the authority to make this pardon but doing so at this time undermines his claim for the respect of rule of law as Mr. Arpaio has shown no remorse for his actions. But that is not the only reason Roger is furious at John. Advertisement The healthcare debacle was a brutal blow John struck for some still unknown reason, maybe Roger knows, and of course there is the Russian scandal. Which mission has been happy to run point on. McCain has been highly critical of Russia and very anti-Trump, particularly the Kremlin's increasingly aggressive cyber attacks and hacking campaigns. He is a warmonger and a scumbag so of course, he calls out Russia at every turn. He wants a war. A special counsel and at least four congressional committees are currently investigating the Kremlin's efforts to meddle in the 2016 presidential election as well as possible collusion between the Trump campaign and Moscow.
Breaking he did it. Finally he did it. President Donald Trump will order the Environmental Protection Agency, EPA, and U.S. Army Corps of Engineers to review the waters of the United States, WOTUS, regulation, effectively repealing another major Obama-era policy. Trump wants the EPA and the Corps to make sure waters are kept free from pollution, while at the same time promoting economic growth, minimizing regulatory uncertainty and respecting the role of states and Congress. The EPA and the Corps will repeal or revise parts of WOTUS that don't match those policy goals, according to a copy of the order obtained by the Daily Caller News Foundation. Trump is expected to sign the order Tuesday. Trump will order federal officials to interpret the term navigable waters in a manner consistent with the opinion of Justice Antonin Scalia in Rupinos v. United States a departure from the Obama administration interpretation of federal power. Supreme Court Justice Antonin Scalia, who died in 2016, wrote in his plurality opinion for Rapinoe's that navigable waters refers to relatively permanent, standing or flowing bodies of water and not ephemeral flows. Scalia also argued a hydrological connection is not a wetland under the Clean Water Act since it must have a continuous surface connection with the water of the United States so it is difficult to determine where the water ends and the wetland begins. Scalia quipped the Corps has stretched the term waters of the United States beyond parity comma in his plurality opinion. Though because there was no majority, the federal appeal court's decision favoring the Corps stood. Trump promised to repeal WOTUS on the campaign trail. EPA and the Corps finalized the rule in 2015, arguing it was necessary to clear up jurisdictional confusion in the wake of two U.S. Supreme Court cases. Republicans, farmers and industrial groups have called the rule an EPA power grab because it extends the agency's powers to new heights over ephemeral waters not physically connected to waters of the U.S. 32 states filed suit against EPA in the court to get federal judges to strike down the rule. EPA Administrator Scott Pruitt sued to have the rule overturned while Attorney General of Oklahoma. A federal judge in North Dakota issued a stay against WOTUS in August 2015, suggesting there could be legal issues with the rule. From the beginning, however, Republicans were pointing to big problems with how WOTUS was grafted. Utah Rep. Jason Chaffetz, the chairman of the House Committee on Oversight and Government Reform, issued a report that found high-level White House staffers assured environmentalist groups the administration would quickly finalize the WOTUS rule. That caused the career staff involved in developing the rule to feel pressure to meet accelerated timelines, which caused deficiencies in the regulatory process, according to Chaffetz's report. The Government Accountability Office found last year that EPA had violated federal anti-lobbying rules by conducting a massive social media campaign with environmentalists to promote WOTUS. Ohio Republican Rep. Bob Gibbs introduced legislation Monday night to fully repeal WOTUS, but that effort could fall flat if EPA review the rule and repeals parts lawmakers oppose. Farmers in Ohio and across the nation cannot afford more costly and burdensome regulations from a Washington bureaucracy that thinks it knows best, comma Gibbs said. Source, Daily Caller Breaking judge shocks the entire nation with amazing truth behind the CIA-Trump is ready to rumble. This is powerful and you have to see this immediately. Judge Andrew Napolitno went live on Fox News and said something beautiful, powerful and truthful. Judge Napolitano unlike many of his colleagues, decided to share the truth with the nation and what he said will touch you Donald Trump is not a tool in the hands of the elitists, consumed by his ambition, like a career politician, but an honorable and wise man in service of the people. Watch the whole interview below. Judge Andrew Napolitano joined Lou Dobbs tonight and discussed the issue of the wiretapping that took place against President Trump. Judge Napolitano explained that if Trump really wanted to hurt the CIA and the deep state, then he needed to do one thing. The deep state has a very wise and shrewd adversary, 
The Man in the Oval Office For the first time in the modern era the man in the Oval Office is an adversary of the deep state and not a tool of it. This video is via Lou Dobbs tonight. We need to request that our elected men and women in Congress do their job and look over what the CIA is doing. These people are operating with executive powers and without authority. The deep state is doing things to the American people that you didn't vote for and that you paid for. The motto of this country used to be no taxation without representation. Say it loud, no taxation without representation. HT Liberty Writers News This is the truth. The roots of the USA are in the Republican Constitution and the freedom spirit kept with generations from our forefathers until today. A. Lincoln said something very important one week before he was assassinated, but the mainstream media and the liberals tried to hide it. The people of these United States are the rightful masters of both Congresses and courts. Not to overthrow the Constitution but to overthrow the men who pervert the Constitution. I feel more and more every day that it is not against the Americans of the South, alone, I am fighting, it is more against the Pope of Rome and his global servants, his pre Jesuits and their blind and bloodthirsty slaves. Those same people who serve the same global elitists have their inheritors today in the Congress and the White House. Today. The history repeats Trump is going to finish what Lincoln started. America for the Americans. Share this post if you love your country and the traditional American values. P.S. Hillary and Bill Clinton both went to Jesuit University and were part of Jesuit sorority slash house. And many other liberals. Just for the record, patriots. Comment and share. Spread the truth, be a patriot. Breaking President Trump Sign New Executive Order President Donald Trump started a big reorganization of the White House. He signed the Comprehensive Plan for Reorganizing the Executive Branch, which will be making the federal government efficient, effective and accountable as he said. Trump added that this order will empower his cabinets to reorganize their departments. He said, we have assembled one of the greatest cabinets in history and I believe that so strongly. And we want to empower them to make their agencies as lean and effective as possible and they know how to do it. Today there is duplication and redundancy everywhere. Billions and billions of dollars are being wasted. This order requires a thorough examination of every executive department and agency to see where money is being wasted how services can be improved and whether programs are truly serving American citizens. This will cause the Office of Management and Budget to oversee the evaluation, which will re-establish governmental function and eliminate all the unnecessary agencies, components of agencies and agency programs. Trump also said, Based on this input, we will develop a detailed plan to make the federal government work better, reorganizing consolidating and eliminating where necessary. In other words, making the federal government more efficient and very, very cost productive. So we re going to do something, I think, very, very special. One of Trump's campaign promises was that he will cut the size of the federal bureaucracy, and in February he said that he is leaving some existing jobs vacant purposefully. A lot of those jobs, I don't want to appoint, because they re unnecessary to have. You know, we have so many people in government, even me. I look at some of the jobs and it s people over people over people. I say what do all these people do question mark you don't need all those jobs. Many of those jobs I don't want to fill. I say, isn't he that a good thing? That s not a bad thing. That s a good thing. We re running a very good, efficient government. What do you think of this? Share your opinion. Breaking Trump announces all Social Security recipients will now receive this much monthly. 2017 is bringing modest payment increases for Social Security recipients. The average monthly payment will increase to $1,360 for single recipients and about $2,260 for married couples. 
recipients who want or need to work will be able to earn more in 2017. Those under 65 can earn up to $16.920 this year. Those who are turning 66 can earn as much as $44.880, this is up $3,000 from last year. In the past, if you worked and received benefits you were penalized if you earned too much. Those penalties are going down this year. $1 in benefits will be withheld for every $2 over the maximum earnings for those under age 65. For those who are 66, but not yet full retirement age, 66 years, 2 months, $1 for every $3 earned over the limit will be held back. Once you reach full retirement age, there is no limit on what you can earn. And, any money previously withheld will be returned. Maximum Benefit Increase The maximum benefit payment a person at full retirement age is allowed to receive is going up to $2,687. However, that payment could increase by more, if retirement is delayed until age 67. Higher Tax Cap Workers currently pay 6.2% of their earnings into Social Security. A contribution matched by employers. Once maximum earnings are reached nothing above that amount is taxable. In 2016, the maximum earning amount was $118.500. In 2017 that increases to $127.200. This means approximately 12 million more people will be paying into Social Security this year.